Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Today, uh, we're having an amazing celebration of our 300th subscriber. In fact, we're already up to something like 305 at my last count. I can only thank you for your amazing support. This channel is a passion play for me. Obviously, I'm not making any money uh, off of it, but I'm enjoying every second of it. I'm especially enjoying connecting with other people out there and reconnecting with my um, lifelong love of comics. So thank you everybody so much. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the number 300 and uh, issue number 300's famous 300 comics, as well as a look at the mailbag and a, a, a quick peek behind the scenes here at Comic Book News. Thanks for watching and thanks again for your support. Welcome back. Today, uh, we're going to dip into the back issue bins, and in celebration of our 300th subscriber, we're going to talk about old issue 300s from various comics, sort of like we did for our 200th issue uh, extravaganza. So uh, let's start with Action Comics number 200, one of the oldest comics still being published. They recently broke the issue 1000 barrier, which is pretty amazing, even though they were published weekly for quite some time, so it's sort of a cheat. Um, but nevertheless, that when it was issue 300, nobody really cared that much. I guess there's no call out that this is an amazing milestone. Back then comics ran for hundreds of issues. Sometimes they would change names without even changing the numbers. So you'd see weird, I don't know, science fiction comics that would just change titles, but the numbering would stay the same. Sort of like what happened with, uh, Amazing Fantasy, Becoming Amazing Spider-Man, sort of, but not really. Anyway, uh, in this one, in this issue, Superman becomes the last man on Earth when he is captive of the Red Sun. There's not another human being left on Earth. I'm trapped here one million years in the future, and I can never escape. Oh no, Superman, how are you going to get out of this one? I'm sure he'll figure it out. Detective Comics number 300 amazingly, also features a flaming sun, right? And of course, who would forget uh, the first appearance of the bizarre polka dot man, right? Great Scott, one of the dots on that fantastic criminal's costume has become a flying saucer. And that other one he ripped off has changed into a flaming sun. Holy high concept, Batman. That is really pretty stupid. Uh, but what are you going to do, right? This was in the 50s. This was a cornier time for comics, uh, so I'm going to give it a pass. But still, you notice no call out, nothing special, 300, big deal. I guess they didn't care about big round numbers as much back then as we seem to today. Let's move on to Marvel. This, in my mind, had to be Marvel's first issue 300. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Yell at me in the comments if you know otherwise. And wow, another amazing celebration of, uh, of a humongous milestone, right? No. Who is this? It, well, if you know FF, you'd know it's the Puppet Master, and he's the father of Alicia, who used to be who used to go out with Ben, and at this point, like, started going with Johnny, and there was a love triangle, and oh, the bitterness. Poor Rocky Ben. Will you ever find love? Well, eventually, they've gone the route that they have with so many these days, and. They've decided they want to make our heroes comfy and married and whatever. And eh, if anybody deserves it, all right. Ben Grimm deserves a little bit of happiness. He's got to live in that rocky body and, and deal with all that nonsense and terrible movie adaptations. Okay, now we're talking. Amazing Spider-Man 300. Really, this was the first issue that came to mind when I started thinking about famous issue number 300s, right? Um, I bought this one off the shelf when I was but a lad. Uh, this is actually... A special 25th anniversary issue, right? And they did the they tiled the number 300 in the back, cost a buck fifty back in the days when comics were costing 75 cents. So this was a, a pretty special thing, right? And a pretty amazing cover too. Um, Tom McFarlane is really great. Of course, it's sort of a cheat because he didn't have to draw the rest of the cover, but um, this has become an iconic image that we're gonna see uh, again and again. Um, what about? Indie comics. We've seen DC and Marvel. What about indie comics? Who made it to issue 300? Oh, Dave Sim and Cerebus made it to issue 300. In my mind, this is a super amazing milestone. Uh, especially because Dave Sim 
basically wrote and drew every single one of these 300 issues, not counting the backgrounds which were drawn by Gerhard for most of the run, though not the entire run. Um, Sim is like the, 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 the godfather of the whole self-published black and white indie boom. You know, he was the guy coming out of Canada with uh, amazing comics chops. I mean, you've all heard of Cerebus and you've seen it, but I'll bet you 90% of you have not read it. Do yourself a favor. Don't listen to the hype and the controversy. Go pick up Volume 1 and 2, or if you're going to read only one, try Volume 2, um, High Society. It's my favorite. If you like comics that deal with... Um, you know, Cerebus is like a sword and sorcery Conan type satire at its heart, but so much more. Uh, uh, it embraces politics and religion and society and philosophy and so many things. And, and it really got its start examining those uh, richer themes back in um, Cerebus High Society. So go pick up that volume. If that doesn't float your boat, and um, it might not. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but if it does scratch your itch, you're really going to love it because there's not too many comics like Cerebus. Well, uh, that issue was a bit, the cover was a bit of a downer, right? Not a celebration of 300. So later, after this whole thing was over, and uh, he started putting out these sort of uh, follow-up one-shots, Cerebus Goes to Hell and stuff, uh, he put out this cover, obviously an homage to the Amazing Spider-Man 300, Todd McFarlane's cover. What is he saying here? He said, if it's a number one, why does it say 300? That's stupid. Indeed. Uh and now Spawn 300, not on the stands yet. Notice the $7.99 price tag for a 72-page comic. Obviously harkens back to Amazing Spider-Man. Todd ripping off himself. I think that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, and uh, doing a great job. You know, Spawn, was Todd McFarlane involved with every one of these issues? Did he write and draw every issue? No. Was he even fully involved, like involved at all with every single one of those issues? I'm going to guess there's at least a few and probably quite a few that he was only peripherally involved in if involved at all but what are you going to do he's a busy guy he's making movie adaptations he's making whole lines of toys he's got kiss comics and toys to make and all kinds of irons in the fire not to mention uh major league signed baseballs to sell and whatever todd made a ton of money based on his originally his work at Marvel and then moving to Spawn and becoming one of the uh, best-selling self-published, or not self-published, but independent published comics of all time. And that wasn't just luck. Uh, there was luck, there was timing involved, but a lot of it had to do with being the right guy in the right place at the right time, right? Only somebody who works as hard as Todd McFarlane works could have achieved what he's achieved. Um, artistically, is he the, the highest echelon of comics creator? In my mind, artistically, no, um, but artistically is not the only uh, game in town, right? So uh, artistically, when he was a kid, I loved his style, and I still look at that old stuff, and I really enjoy his cartoony, sort of Michael Golden-influenced style, but um, I've grown up a little bit. I can appreciate more the savvy businessman that Todd McFarlane was, uh, on top of obviously loving comics. What's the spawn Cerebus connection? Well... Spawn number 10, right? It was self-published. Dave Sim worked on Spawn on this issue. They did a crossover. Um, they worked out the rights, however they worked them out. And I just thought this was a nice little coincidence to include here. It's not issue 300, but it's a bridge between the previous two that I just showed. Finally, we come to not issue 300, but a comic just called 300. This is Frank Miller's uh, epic historical work. Obviously, it was made into a hugely successful movie that's even had a sequel. And there's comic sequels in the works. But let's go back to when this was created. When I did my last thing and I talked about Frank Miller a little bit, I actually omitted 300, not on purpose. I just sort of left it out. The guy's had such a huge career, it's easy to leave something out. But even something as hugely crossover popular as this was a glaring omission. So let's talk a little bit about 300. So 300, when I read it, I read it individually serialized as comics. If you've read it, you've probably read it in a graphic novel format. That's if you've read it. Most people probably have seen the movie, but have probably not read it. It's in a, a like a horizontally shaped rectangle as opposed to a, 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 a vertical one, like a normal graphic novel would be. Um, 
But when it was originally published, it was published in a regular floppy pamphlet form. But every single page that you see in the graphic novel was a double page spread in the comic. This was pretty innovative. I don't remember anybody doing that. I've seen comics with splash pages, told in all splash pages before, but never told in all double page spreads. An artistic and technical achievement on top of being a rip roaring story and a, you know, a historical epic. Uh, Todd's wanted to tell the story of the, the, the Spartans at the gates of Thermopylae holding off, you know, this humongous army uh, of Persians. Uh, and, and he did a great job. How long has he been thinking about this story, though? There's a little Easter egg. If you go back to Batman The Dark Knight Returns, uh, there's a part where they talk. The news, the little talking head news guys are talking about... Um, uh, they're showing the seediness and depravity of Gotham City. And they talk about a porn star uh, named Hot Gates, right? And Hot Gates uh, is another name for the gates of Thermopylae. Thermopylae, thermal, hot, hot gates, right? So this was Frank... Slipping in a reference to 300 all the way back in, what, 86? So this had been percolating for a long time. And once he saw that Sin City had become a big hit and was getting picked up and in Hollywood was interested, uh, he, he knew it was time that he could tell this story. He could own the rights himself, publishing through Dark Horse. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. So uh, that's it for our examination of... Uh, famous issue 300s now let's go to the comic book mail room where we're going to talk uh a little show a little bit behind the scenes right so a lot of you wonder how do we shoot this amazing thing uh comic book news well we've got of course we've got our state-of-the-art studio facilities right we've got uh, a lot of people think we use green screens and uh, uh, cgi but as a matter of fact it's all hand-built models uh this is uh, joey jojo from our modeling department Guy does amazing work. Um, but, you know, the uh, the question I get the most is, well, let, let me see. I've got a, a letter right here. Let's see. This is from uh, Chippy V in San Diego. And Chippy writes, uh, Dear Dan, love your show. Uh, wondering if you could give us a sneak peek at the Million Dollar Comics cam. I, I really love it, uh, but... It seems like you call it a million dollar cam, but it seems kind of like a cheap like thing. So what's going on? Well, Chippy, thanks for writing. Thanks for asking. Now I can't show you the million dollar comics cam. I can give you this artist representation. It's it's a little too top secret. I don't really want um, the truth falling into the hands of all those other comic book YouTube channels out there. You know, most people think it's like it's something along these lines. You know, but how silly would that to call something this cheap a million dollar comics cam? And that's just a little bit ridiculous. So thanks for writing, Chippy. Uh, we, we really thank your support. And you know what? I thank all of you for your support out there. So um, it's only because of you that we've been able to be this successful. We've got our sights set on bigger and better things. I would love to have this channel monetized. Not like it's ever gonna provide a living for me, but I wanna take that money and put it back into uh, the channel, into reading more comics, and maybe upgrading to a billion dollar comics cam at some point. So your support is what makes that possible. Thank you for clicking like and subscribing. I'm sure not many of you made it to this point in the video, but I'll tell you what, if you did make it to this point in the video, go ahead and uh, call it out in the comments and we'll see what we can do about a special drawing for a special surprise for those of you who are actually paying attention. So thanks for watching and we will see you next time as we begin the road to 400 subscribers.